All right, so question one. Um, so for this one, I'm just gonna go through the rules and eliminate um, the rule breakers. So the first rule that um, I'll choose is the third one has to be non-local because that's really easy to scan for. Um, so the rule breaker there is D. Then I'm going to look at this one. So S has to be before Q and V and Q has to be immediately before V. So A is out. Skip V. Skip V. Okay. Um, and S and V have to be different types of calls. So I'm just scanning for S and V and what type of call they are. So C, they're both local. That's not allowed. Um, and uh, what else do we have here that we have to pay attention to? Uh, T has to be local and Q has to be local. Um, okay, so E is out because their Quinn is non-local. So B has to be the correct answer. And what do we have with B? We have S, local, Q, local, V, non-local, um, and T, local and R local. Okay, great. So um, that's a completed acceptable solution, right? It matches up with that first scenario we created there, but um, it's one specific orientation of T and R. All right, question two. If Roth's call was second, okay, so then we're dealing with this scenario here. So, Q, O, V. Okay, we don't know if R is local or non-local. So, uh, what must be true? It must be true that, call non, call no, first local, second local. What am I missing here? If R is second, oh, then, sorry, T has to be first. <laughs> and T is local, so um, the first call is local, D. Um, yeah, so I mean, that was the reason that I even had T, it's the options there for that first scenario. Three, if T's call is fifth, um, so that's possible here. So um, T being fifth is, yeah, it's only possible in this scenario. So we have to have S, Q, V. We know S is local, Q is local, V is non-local. Um, if T is fifth, then... Um, since T is local, the fifth one would be local, and then R is fourth, and we do not know if it's local or non-local. Um, so A is the correct answer. So it's possible that it could be non-local. All right, question four. If Roth's call was local, okay, so, um, I'm interested in what that means for uh, the third position because this third position has to be non-local and we already know that T is local and Q is local. If R is also local, then the middle position has to be either V or S. Okay, so if it's V, we have both examples of, of that. Um, if it's S, then we have S, Q, V, the middle, then um, S would be non-local, V and Q would um, both be local, and um, R and T would be first and second, and they'd both be local. So what must be false? Um, Q's call was fourth, no, it could be fourth. Roth's call was second, it could be second. Smith's was second, mm. I do not think that that is possible. So C is the correct answer, right? So Smith would either have to be first or third. Um, can T's call be first? Yes. Can V's call be fifth? Yes. So we really used the bank of acceptable solutions for that one. All right, so last question. If the first call was non-local, 
So if the first is non-local, that means we're not dealing with this scenario here. So um, we can't have SQV to start us off. Um, so that means that um, Q is fourth and V is last. Q is local. Uh, the first call is non-local. The third call is non-local. Um, T has to be local, so T is second. Um, and then R and V are left here. And, or sorry, not R and V, um, R and S. Look at that. R and S. Um, since both of these positions are non-local, we know that V has to be local. All right. And um, the question asks us for how, for exactly how many of the recipient's calls can their positions in the order of the calls be determined? Um, so we can determine uh, T, Q, and V, but not R or S. So three or C is the correct answer. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's it for game one. Let me know if you have any specific questions about that one, um, but I'm gonna move right along um, to game three. I'll skip game two for now and move right to game three.